Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel for today's video. I'm so excited to be on day number 16. We are a little behind, but we will be caught up in the next few days. I'm gonna be doing my girl Jasmine's nails. I actually did her nails when I first started doing nails. It's been years since I've seen her, so it was really nice to catch up with her and do her nails once again for today's video. We're gonna be doing pink designs, definitely Christmas vibes, of course. Before we get into the tutorial portion of today's video, I have a few announcements to make. Random winner alert. I did not announce a giveaway in my last video, but I've been loving doing random giveaways. So if you guys have been following my videos and answering my questions, you automatically were entered into the giveaway. I'm gonna be sending my girl Melody Moody a $150 gift card to Profiles Backstage. If you guys are only now hearing about Profiles Backstage, you are probably new to my channel because I talk and rave about them all the time on my channel. They are a small family-owned business. I absolutely adore them. I actually met them one year at Premier Orlando and I started shopping their stuff since then, probably five years ago. So I've adored them before I even started my YouTube channel. They're very, very affordable. They have a huge variety of products from nail art decals, glitter, acrylics, brushes. I absolutely adore all of their products. Not to mention, they are also very, very affordable in comparison to a lot of brands out there. Now, I did wanna go ahead and just let you guys know that if you guys have not shopped their website because it requires a license, please, please, please pay attention to this next portion of the video. Make an account, do not enter a license number. It actually doesn't require it, it just asks for one. You don't actually have to input that information in there. So if you haven't shopped their website because of that specific reason, definitely go create an account, bypass the license number portion, and you will be able to shop all of their amazing products. Do not forget to use my discount code to save a little bit of money. That being said, I'm also gonna be doing another giveaway in today's video. So always, always, always pay attention to the questions in the video that will automatically enter you into the giveaway if you comment in the comment section your answers to those questions. And then another little disclaimer, please do not fall for these scams. I hate that I have to include this in every single one of my videos. It's really, really sad how people can even do this to other humans, but do not fall for the scams. I will never comment saying that you want anything and I'll definitely not ask you for any information and I definitely won't ask you to send me any type of money in exchange for whatever giveaway they are promised in you. I always announce my giveaways and my winners in my videos. So make sure you guys are paying attention to that. Without further ado, I hope you enjoy the video. Now let's get right into it. Getting right into today's video, we're gonna start off by prepping my girl's nails. Here we have Jasmine, she is new to my channel. I used to do her nails when I first started doing nails probably five to six years ago, and she is back in my chair, so it was lovely catching up with her. I am going to be doing something fun on her nails for today's video, so we're gonna start off by using my e-file at 4,000 RPMs. Along with that, I'm using a mandrel bit and sanding band, both from Profiles Backstage. So we're gonna be prepping her natural nail very thoroughly by buffing off the shine so that everything adheres very good. Now here you see me kind of pushing back by the lifting of the cuticle so I'm essentially just taking my e-file with mandrel bit and just pushing back that cuticle to expose all that dead skin and remove it from the surface of her natural nail you need to do this and you have to do this in order for the product to adhere properly a lot of the time we miss some dead skin from that area and that can cause lifting so I'm trying to really thoroughly remove that especially since she hasn't gotten her nails done in a good minute so I want to make sure that I fully, fully get that off. You can always use your cuticle pusher for that process, but I prefer to use my e-file just to save a little bit of time and avoid having to reach for another product. So here I'm going in with my diamond bit. This one is very, very tiny, still at 4,000 RPMs on my e-file. And I'm gonna be taking that again to once again fully push that back and essentially just finish removing that dead skin 
The mandrel bit is quite thick, so if you have issues trying to get into those hard to reach areas, I always recommend using a smaller bit. Now, surprise, surprise, I took out my cuticle nippers once again. These nippers are freaking amazing, so they definitely make me feel a little bit easier when using them. They're super, super sharp, and I know that if I go in and cut, it's going to trim just what I need to trim. Sometimes when they're a little bit too old or just bad quality, they won't do the job correctly. I'm just taking that quickly and nipping off the top layer of that. And if she would have had a little bit more dead skin on that area, I would have gone in with my ball bit. But I thought they looked pretty good and I didn't want to do super, super extensive cuticle work because you guys know that's not my thing. So now I'm going in with my favorite tips from Amazon. I'm going to be going in and just applying those with my Young Nails brush on glue. Went ahead and sized them before and then I'm just kind of sticking them on there. Next, we're going to be taking our nail tip cutter and trimming these. She asked for like a medium long length, so that's pretty much what we're doing here. I'm just checking with her. And how I check is I literally just put it against the nail, show them, and then they say yes or no, and then they tell me longer or shorter, and I kind of go from there. So I'm going to be going in, just trimming those down. Then we're going to be shaping those very quickly with my hand file. Once I'm done shaping her nails, I'm gonna be going in with my mandrel bit once again, blending her tip to her natural nail. I'm only doing this because they did stick out quite a bit, so I wanna make sure that they're nice and flush and my acrylic goes on there nice and flawlessly. Now, if you feel like the tip fits on there perfectly, then you don't have to file it. Honestly speaking, it's not gonna make a difference whether your acrylic stays on there good. It's just a matter of how you wanna lay the product and what type of product you're gonna be laying on there. Dusting very quickly, and then of course cleansing that natural nail, removing all those excess oils and removing that dust. With a lint-free wipe and a little bit of Young Nail Swipe, I've had a lot of questions about what this does, and that's all it does. It removes all the excess oils, which you absolutely need, so it works as a dehydrator and also cleanser. So I use it a lot for prep and also for cleaning up nail art and all that good stuff. Now I'm going in with a triple X bond from Not Polish and adding two coats of this on her natural nail only.
Now, I've been in the mood for testing new products that I have recently purchased, so here we are once again. This is one of the beautiful glitter acrylic mixes from Secret Nell Affair. If you guys missed the video where I did unboxings of some advent calendars and swatches, definitely go check that out. This was part of that video. But I'm gonna be going in on the pinky and the thumb as well with this beautiful acrylic glitter mix. I did wanna quickly mention to you that I officially determined that I do not like chunky glitter acrylic mixes. It's not my thing. I don't like that I don't have control over where I'm placing the little chunks of glitter and the big chunks of glitter. And most importantly, I cannot lay that snowflake or the bigger snowflakes flat to save my life when it is in an acrylic glitter mix. That being said, I'm gonna be throwing that into a giveaway, so make sure you guys stay tuned for those. I will be giving away all of my chunky glitter acrylic mixes that I recently purchased, so. My loss, your gain. I just cannot work with them. I don't like working with them, and instead of just hoarding a bunch of products, I'd rather gift them to one of you so that y'all make better use of it. Now for this beautiful Barbie pink color, I'm so excited because it is literally like a perfect pink color. I am using Prissy Pink from Natalie Carmona. She recently came out with her Christmas collection and this is part of that collection. Again, very, very blendable, super opaque colors. Definitely really, really love. Now, not sure if you can catch that at any point on camera, but I did notice a few specks. So actually you can see me trying to melt it away right there. A few specks of red pigment, which I'm assuming she used in this mix. Otherwise, it wouldn't be in the mix. Um, you can kind of see it throughout as I'm laying it on all the fingers. At one point or another, they do pop up across every single nail so that's just something that you might want to be on the lookout and pay close attention to you definitely don't want to have any little pigment streaks in your solid nail color at all um, not that big of a deal to me it's not like a determining factor of why I wouldn't purchase a product it is kind of annoying to have to like spread it out and focus on blending it out but again it's not a determining factor of whether i'm gonna use or purchase a product like that's not a good enough reason for me to not use and not recommend a product but if you definitely do not like that then of course i wouldn't recommend this for you but the color is absolutely beautiful the formula is absolutely amazing so definitely definitely love this color and i'm so excited to be using it in today's video we're going to be using our typical acrylic application and applying that on her ring finger, middle finger, and index finger. Now, for whatever reason, while I was doing her nails, I felt the process to be a lot longer, and it was because I was using such small beads, and then as I was editing the video, I realized that it was because I was using a small brush. So I don't know why I didn't catch on while I was doing her nails, but I was definitely using a smaller brush, so it just made the process a little bit longer. So definitely use a bigger brush. Here I'm using the Sculpted Like It's Hot acrylic brush in a size 10. Profiles Backstage brushes do run a little bit smaller, so I typically use this one for my acrylic fills. Not quite sure why I grabbed it to do a full set, but now I'm just going in and encapsulating her nails. Always, always, always encapsulate glitter nails, and I always encapsulate my colored acrylic as well because I like to save product. I do thin layers of the colored acrylic, and then I go in to add the strength back into that nail with my clear acrylic from Not Polished. Now once everything is nice and dry, I'm gonna be going in with my e-file. Here I'm using my e-file at a speed of 10,000 RPMs. Along with that, I'm using a five in one bit from Kiara Sky. And I'm gonna be going in and just filing around that cuticle area and then filing the entire surface, focusing on those areas that need a little bit of extra love. But specifically that cuticle area, you wanna make sure that that acrylic is nice and flush to the natural nail. Otherwise that can cause lifting as well.
Next time I'm going in with my hand file and I'm gonna be filing the sides and the tip as well just to make sure that that shape is nice and perfect. I alternate from right to left, left to right, kinda just depends. I wanna make sure that I'm not over filing on one side or the other. And then we're gonna be flipping the hand around to look at the nails from her perspective and square that off. Unfortunately, I did get off camera for that, but you guys get the gist by now. And then we're going to be going in with our nail art. Once we're done buffing, I'm gonna be going in with a lint-free wipe, a little bit of Young Nail Swipe, also cleaning the surface of the nail. And then we're gonna be going in with some fun Christmas nail art designs, all focused around the pink vibes. And we're gonna be incorporating white as well because white and pink always look super, super cute for Christmas time. Now for our first nail, we're gonna be going in with the gel liner from Profiles Backstage in the color white. And I'm actually using a poly gel brush from McCart to apply this. I always recommend a thicker brush for this type of process, especially just to get it going a lot quicker. Not only that, but the more stiff the bristles are for whatever reason, I prefer that type of vibe when I'm fully coating a nail especially. Now we're gonna be doing the snow kind of carved out type of design. So I'm gonna be going in with my 3D brush. This has been my go-to for this process. And I'm gonna be making sure that that point is nice and pointy. And I'm gonna be taking a little bit of my Young Nails Swipe. You can use alcohol as well. I just use Young Nails Swipe for everything and I swear by it. And I'm going to be removing the excess swipe off of my brush. So I want very minimal amount on there. I don't want it dripping. I don't wanna go onto the nail to carve out my letters and it kinda of spread all over the place. So very, very minimal amount. You just want it to be nice and moist but not drenching in swipe. And then once you go in and carve, you wanna make sure you continuously wipe your brush onto your paper towel because you will get that white gel liner transferred onto your bristles. And when you go in to clean up once again, you're just gonna smear around that same product that's on your brush. And I'm using very small stroking motions because again, the white does transfer onto my bristles and I don't want it to smear all over the place and just contaminate the rest of the design. So I'm gonna go in and write the little word snow and then we're gonna be doing two little footprints on the bottom as well. And then if you guys watched my other video where I did this on Brittany, you guys will know that I went ahead and let it nice and wet. And we're gonna be sprinkling on some glitter over top. If you just want texture, no sparkle, you can definitely go in with clear acrylic or even white acrylic. We just opted for glitter for this design. And I really, really like how it looks. It looks super, super cute. Now, good little refresher, we're going in and doing some long little oval shapes. Same process, a little bit of Young Nail Swipe, cleaning off my brush continuously. And then I'm gonna be going in with my liner brush from Not Polish. This has been my go-to a lot recently. And I'm using the long one, and we're gonna be perfecting the top portion of that footprint. Easier process than trying to do both little sections separately.
Now we're gonna be going in with Pixie Glitter from Profiles Backstage. It's a micro fine glitter, perfect for texturizing a nail without being super chunky. Always, always, always recommend Profiles Backstage for these type of glitters and really anything nail art. They have a really good selection and it's very, very affordable. Now here I am using my little dab tool that is also from Profiles Backstage. And I'm gonna be using the Frosting White Gel Paint. I could not find my dab white paint. I was quite annoyed that I couldn't find it. And then after I was done with her set, I looked through my drawer and it was right there right in plain sight so i was definitely really irritated with myself but the dab gel paints are a lot thicker very concentrated pigmented gels which make this process a lot easier and definitely a lot more opaque i'm using the frosting gel paint so it's a little bit more on the sheer side when doing this process but if you use the right gel paints with the right products you should be good to go so i'm just kind of dabbing it across the entire perimeter of the nail and then i'm fixing those little edges because obviously i messed it up and then we're going to be curing that in the light. But before I go in and cure in the light, I'm going to be working on the other nails. Always cure whenever you feel it is necessary. Sometimes I do it after every single nail. But sometimes I feel a little bit more comfortable with the fact that I'm not going to mess up the other design. So I go straight into the next nail. So here we're going to be doing a heart. It's going to be a candy cane heart connecting from the ring finger to the middle finger. So I'm starting off with my pink layer. So we're starting off with our darker color. Here it is pink. So whatever darker color you're using besides white, start with that color. So if you're using blue and white you're going to use the blue one first so i'm going to be going in again with that not polish liner and i continue to check my work and make sure that they are aligned perfectly i do this so that when she leaves they're perfectly centered and one's not above the other you want to make sure that it is nice and perfect otherwise it's going to look funny so i'm going to go in again finalize that pink heart then I'm going to be going in and curing this in the light for a full 60 seconds. At this point, I don't trust myself to go on to the next nail without messing this up. So we're curing for 60 seconds and then I will move on to the next steps. Now, once this hand was in the light, I went ahead and did the heart on the opposite hand as well. Now, once this is out of the light, I'm going to be going in and outlining that candy cane heart. So I'm just starting off with the white frosting gel paint from Profiles Backstage. I actually mixed in a little bit of gel liner in there to dilute it a little bit. I feel like that consistency is my perfect consistency. So it's literally right in between the gel liner consistency and the frosting gel paint. I went ahead and mixed it to just help me a little bit so that it glides on the nail a little bit better. And I'm going in and outlining the heart. And then we're going in with our candy cane little stripes. The key to this is just doing them slightly diagonal and doing some skinny ones, some thick ones, leaving a good amount of pink in there, leaving thin strips of pink, just kind of eyeballing it to see what the vibe you want to go for is. That's pretty much like all it consists of, a bunch of thick and thin lines. I'm gonna be going in with this silver glitter liner from Not Polish. And just letting you guys know, I failed to remember that when you mattify these type of glitters, it does not look cute. So I went ahead and added this to both of the sides. And then I cured in the light, went in with matte top coat, and I thought it looked hideous. So then we're gonna be adding it afterwards again. Just the type of glitter and the type of shine that it gives off is so not cute when mattified. Other glitters like the one that I'm using here on the pinky looks fine, but that one was not it. I'm gonna be going in with some little snowflake type of designs. And then as you can see here, this nail now is matte and it does not look cute. We're gonna be going in with white once again. And now I'm gonna be adding some little icicle drips down the heart. I know you guys have seen this type of design before. It's super, super cute. 
So I'm just layering that on there on top of the matte top coat. I'm so sorry that I accidentally cut that out, it looks like. So I did go in with Matte It from Not Polish. Mattified the surface of the nail because this is going to be our top layer with the sugaring. So sorry, but I did add that. Cured it in the light. Now we're going in with these tiny little details. Again, using my frosting gel paint and liner mix in white for these super, super easy little icicle type of designs. Then we're gonna be sugaring on that same glitter called Pixie from Profiles Backstage. I'm going in with this design that I always go to when in doubt. If I have no idea what I wanna add to another nail or the rest of the nails, I always do this like negative space type of candy cane design. I feel like it just looks so cute. It ties everything together and the key is just to doing thick lines, thin lines, or really whatever the heck you want and I feel like it just ties everything together. So I'm doing pink and white ones as well and we're gonna be curing that in the light. Once everything is nice and cured, I am actually going in and adding that second layer of that beautiful silver glitter liner, as you can see. The huge difference it makes when it's shiny against the matte. Now I'm gonna be going in with Matte It from Not Polish, finalizing the rest of the nails that I forgot to top coat or that I was finishing the nail art on. And then I'm gonna be fixing any little mistakes that I have, removing all that excess glitter, filing that slightly because I kind of overflowed with the gel polish, adding my Sweet V Cuticle Oil from Profiles Backstage, and that pretty much concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a ton. And I'll see you guys next time.